This week on Wisconsin Foodie. Paul Cunningham, the owner, proprietor, Shriners Restaurant Incorporated, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. It's classic diner food. It's to us, it's not old fashioned. It never went out of style. Look at this. Yeah. This is so classic Americana grand restaurant. Now, the one request, there are those cinnamon rolls over there yes. that look like they're the size of a prize fighter fist yeah. and as sweet as my Aunt Rose. Yes. It's one of the best things I've had this year. Hi, my name is uh, Reinhard Liebner here at Bayview Packing Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's an honor to be here at Bayview Packing. You've got to have like surgeon hands. I'm, I'm <laughs> floundering all over the place here. My face down in that bucket is one of the more distinctive scent memories I'm probably going to have this year. <laughs> We're all pretty passionate about what we do and, and uh, we love what we do. Is it weird to toast with an egg? Cheers. I don't think so. To heck with it. Wolskis. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin. Society Insurance. Small details, big difference. Outpost Natural Foods Co-op. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Illing Company. Creating packaging solutions for you. Fab Wisconsin. The regional food and beverage industry cluster. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin are proud to support Wisconsin Foodie, helping viewers celebrate our state's vibrant food culture. With nearly 11,000 family dairy farms, the Wisconsin dairy industry generates more than $26 billion annually for the Wisconsin economy and brings recognition to the state for producing award-winning cheeses. I've had Society Insurance for my restaurant from the beginning because I know they understand my business and how it's evolving and how the industry is evolving. You're going to have the coverage and the support you need for your unique operation. restaurant for at its very heart it's to feed us and sometimes restaurants they distinguish themselves in a different way they become part of the community part of the state when you have some place that's so special that it's endured for 77 years then you have Shriners this is classic Wisconsin it's classic Americana it's the way that we eat it's the way that we meet our neighbors it's the way that we embrace food Shriners it's one of the special ones Paul Cunningham, the owner, proprietor, president, chief cook and bottle washer, Shriners Restaurant Incorporated, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Started my career here at the age of 15, 45 years ago, do the math, as a busboy and a dishwasher, knowing that someday I was going to own the restaurant. I just didn't necessarily share that with the second generation of the Shriners family. I've realized from a young age that Shriners was unique and, and needed to be preserved. So I became a full-time employee and some of us have been here half of the history of the business. 77 years ago when Regina Shriner and Albert, her husband, literally took the, the few hundred dollars that they had to their name and started a business, it was based on giving people food and friendship and treating them like they were coming into your own home. 
Every day, thousands of people get off the highway to come to a place that they see as representing uh, a part of America that for us hasn't gone away. Uh, professional service, great food, it's classic diner food. It's, to us, it's not old fashioned, it never went out of style. my friend. Welcome to Fond du Lac. How are you, buddy? I look forward to this meeting. It's well, it's hard to miss the sign. You're right. Yeah. That lantern on the top. It's the beacon of hospitality. Now, your pin says 45 years. Uh -huh. 45 years. It's no big deal. I got lots of 30-year staff and 20-year staff. and uh, People are new. I say, yeah, I'm uh, sorry. You're going to be new for about five years. There's really nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to make you feel old, but I'm as old as your name tag, buddy. Oh, well. <laughs> Come on, onward to history. Yeah, let's right? walk over yeah, here. Good. Well, here's the wall of history. And of all the things, I think that this is really interesting. That menu is from about 1967. To think that you'd have an entire sandwich and french fries, salad and coffee for 95 cents. Wow. Uh, clam chowder, a pint was 69 cents. I mean, you know I love this restaurant and you know how much I love the history, but that chowder aspect is so random. It is. Right, we're not our, exactly our known for Our founder traveled out east in the uh, 40s and uh, experienced a lot of different chowders and said, if I can't uh, do better than this, I'm going to give up. I come back and say, you know what, of all the things here in the Heartland, I'm going to nail chowder. I'm going to do chowder. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those wonderful things we've always had. It. All right, lead on with a tour if you would, my friend. All right. Just, can I take a look at this? Yeah. This is so classic Americana grand restaurant. You, you couldn't uh, build this today no. if you had hundreds of millions of dollars. A lot of places have a marketing department creating a backstory and we don't have to create one. <laughs> we are one. Everything has a tradition. I don't even know after 45 years what some of the traditions are. I don't know why we have potato pancakes Monday one week and Wednesday the next, but we do. It's because it's always been yeah, done. People mark their calendar a year in advance and we best not deviate from that. We'll have to buy them all new calendars. So. <laughs> Onto the kitchen. Onto the kitchen. Yeah, keep to your right. Oh, then, oh come yeah, on. It's an ocean of stainless steel. Yeah. It's, I have stood in a multitude of kitchens, but this is one of the most awesome ever. Breakfast is a huge part of our day. Sure. So we were using half of the kitchen for the biggest meal of the day. Well, you feed the community. Look at these beautiful American fries. Cast iron pan, good old lard. But this is the terroir of Shriners, these French pans that have been making these yep. American fries. That was a lousy flip. That was a lousy flip. That was a lousy flip. When I was a kid and I was in the fry kitchen, the ladies who taught me to be a fry cook, when it was slow, they'd put me off on the side with a pan, with a piece of bread. You just stand there, Paul, and you just flip that, and when it isn't hitting the floor, then we'll let you come back in and, and right. do it. Oh, you get to walk into this room and the way that it smells every day. Yeah. Look at this pie rack. Yeah, this is our Ritz nut tort. Crushed Ritz crackers, walnuts, egg whites. It's like a like a soft, chewy sham tort with real whipped cream. Just a few more walnuts, just because you never have enough. So that's our Ritz cracker tort. So I've got to tour with you. I've got history. I've seen your amazing kitchen. I have not gotten breakfast. Well, that can be rectified. <laughs> This, I love. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Now this is a bit of an anomaly because most of the people that sit at this counter don't actually need a menu. No. So here at the counter, hallowed ground of Shriners, with you, Paul Cunningham, second owner, 
What am I having for breakfast? You know, I think uh, he needs roast beef hash with poached eggs. Okay. Um, <laughs> I love that Marlene already knew the second half of that. One. Yeah. Now the one request, and I'm in your capable hands here, but there are those cinnamon rolls over there that look like they're the size of a prize fighter fist yeah. and as sweet as my Aunt Rose. Yeah. I'm sorry, if we could have a moment of silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is a, a single serving? This is a single serving, yes. You yeah. know, at home or when we travel, I don't usually get to start breakfast with essentially dessert. dessert. Well, life is short, eat dessert first, we say at Shriners. So. Here's to that. Oh yeah. It's one of the best things I've had this year. It's powdered sugar melt in your mouth, amazing. Yep. All right, this is gonna be a magical moment of gooey goodness. Yes. Right here. This is. Oh yeah. This is breakfast. Yeah, that's breakfast. This is breakfast. Yeah. So I'd like to introduce you to uh, Nathan Haupt, uh, my son-in-law, oh, son who is the next generation of Shriners. Now, you're the son-in-law, but you're the new guy. Oh, absolutely. I'll be <laughs> the new guy for the next 10 years, probably. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I've been here a meager 13 years, so I'm still cutting my teeth and, and learning the process, absolutely. Yeah. This tradition, this living Smithsonian to great food, especially in our state, it's so key. Absolutely. Yeah. Paul? Thank you. Thanks for keeping a treasure safe. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, you bet. Once we're done shooting, it's going to be a breakfast box. Oh, okay. Just mm -hmm. get your kitchen ready. Yeah. yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Reinhard Liebner. I'm uh, fourth generation in the pickling business here at Bayview Packing Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Well, my grandfather started Bayview Packing, but before that, there was a company called the RM Liebner Company, uh, and they specialized uh, mainly in sauerkraut, pickles, and pig's feet, and as well as herring. From there, uh, my grandpa Bruno started with his two brothers, started Bayview Packing Company in 1923. Ronnie, how are you? Kyle. Good. It's an honor to be here at Bayview Packing. Well, welcome to you. I hope we can give you a good tour today. Well, I'm a big fan of the herring, but I understand you have a few other things going on. Yep, quite a, quite a variety of different products we make. <laughs> Looks like something's happening over there. That's our, uh, our pickled pork hocks that we do, that we're uh, packing today. That is an unknown delicacy to me. Well, I think really it's kind of an offshoot of the, of the pig's feet or pork feet. Sure. Uh, business that was very popular with uh, German and Polish type people. All right, I know there's more to Bayview Packing than just this room. Where do we go from here? Uh, I think we'll start up in the store, kind of go through uh, showing you some of our other products and give you an idea of what all we do here. A pickled showroom. Absolutely. <laughs> now this is a showroom. Tell me about all this stuff. There's so much history here. Okay. We have a number of different products that we make here. It starts with our line of pickled eggs. Uh, we have three flavor eggs we do. We have the original, we do a red hot, and then we do a garlic and onion. Mm -hmm. Who's this guy? That's a picture of my dad uh, chopping pig's feet there. I started working with my dad back when I was six years old. He would take <laughs> me to work. He was kind of an intimidating guy to work for, too. He was, he was in the Second World War. And well, look at the cleaver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got that upside the head if you didn't behave. <laughs> now this is the jar that keeps capturing my eye, and I don't know how I feel about it because it's this beautiful, is, isn't it? It's a, it, it's gorgeous. It, it's an unknown delicacy to me, and it's something you guys do particularly well, I'm told. Yeah, that's really our number one product uh, for the for the Bayview label. People, when they think of pork hocks, you know, they wonder what the heck is a pork hock. But really, all it is is it's the pork shoulder. It's the front mm -hmm. comes off the front of the hog instead mm -hmm. of the the back of the hog. 
So you're, it's really very similar to ham, only I think it tastes better. Right. We're actually working on these, these pork hocks today. Uh -huh. So we'd love for you to get your hands dirty and get involved and, and see the process, and we'll, maybe we'll, we'll show you how to pack a couple of So dinners. by we, you mean me. You, yeah. We'll be handling the hocks. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to see if you can put one together. All right, let's try it. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We'll put some hocks up there for you to <laughs> sink your hands into. I love it. I don't know if that's enough. We're going to find out. Find out how you can do here. I got you in good, capable hands. I got Richard. Richard's gonna help you. He's been here since 1974. Okay. And my son Eric. And you probably weren't even born in '74. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. How are you? All right. Give me the strategy, gentlemen. Okay. First, you get a jar. Yeah, that makes sense. There you go. Yeah. Two different size pieces. Two different size pieces. See them. Big and a medium. Okay. You got one cut. Mm-hmm. Cut side always goes to the outside of the jar. Okay. Okay. Like thus? Yeah, try and put a big cut where the opening is, where the label doesn't cover. All right, I got four in there and the sides are looking good, at least I think so. Well, until you get to this piece here. Oh, there was You gotta flip it to the cut side out. You've gotta have like surgeon hands. I'm, I'm <laughs> floundering all over the place here. This is actually harder than I thought. All right, let's start all over. Okay, so we're gonna start with a big. I would start with a big piece, yes. Yep. Away from the label. Okay. Cut side out. Right, cut side out. Half moon. A little bit bigger piece. A little bit bigger like that, piece. Maybe. I think that was my folly before, Dick. All Look, right, how are we doing? So. Looks good so far. Yeah? Try that one. I might save it, second try. Well, I'm feeling pretty good at this point. Not too bad, except that's the wrong side out. And you don't want a piece out like that. For the love of Mike. So how long have you been doing this? And I don't mean just today. Uh. <laughs> I think I've been working here uh, for five years full time. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like my dad, uh, I grew up coming down here on Saturdays. When I was done, um, my pay was going to be a big jar of Polish sausage, and I always look forward to that. <laughs> that really, you took that bargain. Yeah. Back when I was young, younger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Younger. Thank you for saying that. We still laugh about that. How's that? Doesn't seem full enough. No. Nope. See how the piece turned on the bottom? Yeah. Big holes in the bottom. Oh man, you don't want that. Nope. All right, does that mean I have to start all over? Might. Be honest with me. Might, yep. Okay. So how long have you been doing this, my friend? They said since the early 70s. <laughs> <laughs> why, do you, uh, why do you do it? Why do you love it so much? The people, yeah. the product. Keeps me busy, it's better than sitting at a desk. What's it like to actually be, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, but you're, you're part of Milwaukee history. Well, you figure I've worked with Eric and Reine, his dad, mm -hmm. gone through what, three generations here. Wow. Yeah, that's a wow. lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of family well, it's just like It's just like we're all part of the same family. There you go. One last job before you have to leave. Scoop the hocks. Scoop the hocks on the table gently so you don't break them apart. Gently. Oh wow, this is one big, briny, gooey, fat, slippery. You'll smell it on yourself later on too. Solution. And here goes. There you go. Something. A couple wow. more. My face down in that bucket is one of the more distinctive scent memories I'm probably going to have this year. <laughs> now we can actually shake. Nice working with you. Good to work with you, Dick. Good work with you. You as well, Eric. So thanks for keeping the tradition going. No problem. Doing this great work and. Uh, I kind of have an appetite. I'm going to go try a couple of these delicacies. Anytime you want a part-time job, you're welcome to come back. <laughs> First, I'm going to wash my hands. <laughs> the slipperiest they have ever been. So how did you enjoy your experience in there? I don't think I did as well <laughs> as I had hoped, but you have a very tolerant crew. Well, good. Yeah. I hope you uh, got a little feel for what we do here. It's harder than it looks. Yeah. And now I think we should uh, get to trying some of our products. It's and I have fair. I have uh, you know a couple thoughts. One is we could try the products here in our in our lunchroom, mm -hmm. or I got a surprise for you. I could take you to a place where you could try the products, and I think it would be uh, pretty pretty unique. Buddy, are you offering me an adventure? I am. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. So, Kyle, <laughs> this is a surprise I had in mind for you. Wolski's, a fourth generation business, who's a great customer of ours. But Riney, we're going to open it. And if we open instead of close Walski's, we may flip everything that's right with Milwaukee all in one beer. We're just going to start a new tradition. <laughs> lean, lean on, buddy. Hello, 
sir. Well, hello, gentlemen. How are you? Nice to meet you. Kyle, Good. let me introduce you to Bernie. Bernie, Bernie how are you? it's Kyle. a real pleasure. Pleasure meeting you. Reine, welcome back. Thanks for coming. So this is a true wall skis experience. Cheers. I mean, you're multi-generational. Correct. And Bernie, how long have, has your family had wall skis? We've had it for 105 years, four generations. So 1908? Yes, sir. 50 years after Wisconsin became a state, wall skis came into being. Bernie, there are eye closed wall skis bumper stickers on the far ends of the earth. I mean, they've been everywhere. You guys are a national legend, not just a Milwaukee thing. Thank you, Doug. But where did this come from? Well, my brother and I, when we started, we started in 1973, and at that time, we had customers that would come in at opening and stay till close. And the customers would, add, would say, well, you should give us something. We've been here all day. And my brother came with the idea, well, we'll give you this bumper sticker for coming and staying until closing. So we gave, we gave them out to the regulars, and then everybody wanted one, and it just blossomed from there. We, we've given them out ever since. Looks like you've got a few things on the bar for us there, Bernie. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll be able to sample them all, but I am excited to try the majority of them. Very good. I, I would recommend the turkey gizzards. Uh, okay, that's where I should begin? I would say yes. I'm most excited and most trepidatious about this, but you tell me it just tastes like a good, rich piece of dark meat, correct? Right. Real rich, real rich in flavor. Yeah. There we go, gentlemen. All right, so these are just, have a bite. Fire up. Oh my God, that's delicious. I wouldn't steer you wrong. I know you wouldn't, man. <laughs> it's even more delicious than I thought. Why don't more people eat these? I think the looks of them scares them. That's the gizzard part. Yeah. It, it doesn't does. exactly flow off your tongue. It doesn't. No, but these are delicious. And they don't look very good. Mm -mm. But they sure taste good. Should we try an egg? Yeah. Okay, one egg. Should we jazz it up, gentlemen? Sure. However you would eat it is how I want to have it, Bernie. Yes. We use a hot sauce with uh, a little cracked pepper. Is it weird to toast with an egg? Cheers. I don't think so. Right, to heck with it. Wolskis. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. I could eat those all day. All right, we're on a roll. Do we go Polish? I think we'll go to the Polish. So this is a pickled smoked Polish sausage. You know, you can cut one for Reini here, but I'm just gonna. You're just gonna degrade in. Oh my gosh. See the firmness of that? I was just gonna say, it still has snap. Down. How do you do that? It's all in the recipe. What about the pork hocks? I haven't had my handiwork yet. Look at that beautiful, Pork yumminess coming out. The boneless pork hock. Oh yeah. Tell you what, I'm just gonna pull this meaty piece off right here, if that's all right with you. So you're a four generation family business. Right. Bernie? Actually, actually I, my with my boys is fifth generation. I'm you, fourth generation. And Bernie, you guys go back how many generations? This is the fourth. We're the fourth. You're the fourth generation. Yes. America needs more of this because this commitment to just doing it right, loving it, not changing it simply because you feel like changing it. We're all pretty passionate about what we do and, and uh, we love what we do. And that's really, that shows through in our products, the quality of our products. Mm -hmm. You know what I love? Sitting here with you two guys eating these delicious pork <laughs> <hocks>. <laughs> All right, this is one of my favorite things to eat in all of Wisconsin cuisine. Pickled herring around a, a pickled pickle. It's a, it's a herring filet. We wrap it around uh, a garlic, garlic grilled pickle and uh, Put a toothpick in it, slice them in half, and then you're good to go. All right, so you go with yeah. the, you go with the onions, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, I've always been a kind of a purist, but a little bit onion on there. Well, when you're sitting, you know, when you're sitting here with the Pope of pickled things, then genuflect the way he does. I think you need it to get the complete flavor. I hear the hems in my brain right now. And you think of this, all these different flavors and things, but yet it's all pickled all under the same umbrella, but many different flavors and textures and things. You're kind of a mad scientist genius of pickled things. Well, I can't take all the credit for it. There's been a lot of people that came before me. We've just worked to try and perfect it as much as we can. Keep I, it going. I think you should take a little credit. All right, I'll just buy you a beer. We'll call it. <laughs> all right, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. 
Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board, and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin. Society Insurance, small details, big difference. Outpost Natural Foods Co-op, Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Illing Company, creating packaging solutions for you. Fab Wisconsin, the regional food and beverage industry cluster. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. WMSE 91.7 FM, Frontier Radio. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin are proud to support Wisconsin Foodie, helping viewers celebrate our state's vibrant food culture. With nearly 11,000 family dairy farms, the Wisconsin dairy industry generates more than $26 billion annually for the Wisconsin economy and brings recognition to the state for producing award-winning cheeses. I've had Society Insurance for my restaurant from the beginning because I know they understand my business and how it's evolving and how the industry is evolving. You're going to have the coverage and the support you need for your unique operation. But, uh, White, white. wheat, rye, or raisin toast? Well, you just take a look at me, dear, and you just read. Raisin toast. Ah, raisin toast, yeah. she, this, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is 36 yeah. years of the profession. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's my favorite and, toast, and but I'd never order it for myself. Yeah. You know, there's the famous painting by Edward Hopper, that very stoic diner. Yes. And I once read that the reason why that image is so lonely is because there's no pie. Oh, okay. <laughs> no chowder, no pie. Thanks for letting me muck up your area. Continue doing the beautiful things you do. Thank yeah. you. Have a good day now. You too. I've never seen Kyle get out of something like that.